Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today we have a bit of a roundup video with Cable Time here. So Cable Time contacted me and sent me both of these uh, devices for testing and I have featured them on the channel before when I looked at one of their USB hubs which I actually carry in my bag daily. So before I get any further, I am not being financially compensated uh, for the production of this review. These products were sent to me, so they do have monetary value. However, my opinions and reviews remain my own. So I just want to get that out of the way in the disclaimer there. We're going to dive right into talking about the cable first, and then we'll come back and we'll finish up talking about the uh, NVMe SSD enclosure. What makes this cable unique of course is two things. One is a 240 watt power delivery. Now that power delivery is happening at 5 amps or 48 volts. Your mileage may vary with using this to charge laptops because you need to have a device that can actually push that amount of electricity toward the laptop. So if you have something like a GAN charger like this one here, and if you want to learn more about that you can just check out my channel, then you can probably push down enough power uh, through the cable that it will actually work well. But that is one of the things that you need to be aware of when you enter into uh, these charging cable markets is does my charger actually keep up with the cable or does my cable keep up with the charger? So they come in two varieties, a one meter and a two meter. The one meter is $10.99 whereas the two meter is $15.99. So we get a little warranty card, which is neat, and then the cable itself. So there are magnets uh, strategically inside the cable that allow it to essentially uh, fold up on itself. And this is obviously convenient for storage. It's also convenient if you uh, just want to keep things neat on your desk. That plugs in uh, well enough. And then one could just take out their phone, for example. And there we go she's charging. Now I do have to point out that these fat ends uh, do pose a bit of an issue if you have uh, cases or anything on there because I had to shove that in and even then it doesn't stay in very well. Let's go ahead and plug this into the GAN charger. Grab a laptop, flip that out, and there we go. It is uh, feeding this machine power certainly would take up a very small amount of space in your bag. One of the other things I like too is that you can kind of move the device around and the, co and the cable kind of takes care of itself. That is nice. Um, the idea that you don't have to be like managing the cable um, as you pull it away and then bring it back and it kind of keeps to itself or just through its um, design, I think is actually probably one of the, the best features. It does offer uh, 480 uh, Mbps for data transfer, which is not super fast, but again, this thing is primarily designed uh, for charging. It would be nice if these plugs on the end were a little thinner. Looking at the SSD enclosure, there's a couple of things that we need to point out. First is the price. It is uh, $25.99, and this is a toolless entry, so we'll uh, test that out once we open the box. It does operate at USB 3.1 and is uh, it does support Thunderbolt 3. And this is NVMe or SATA M.2 capable. So it'll work with M key, B and M. It will not work with B key. So if you don't know uh, your drive um, keys at the top where all the pins are, you wanna make sure that you're buying something that will work. It obviously features, as you can see from the box, 10 G BPS in terms of a transfer rate, so pretty decent. And it does come with this USB uh, A to C converter cable. Now, of course, that will impact the transfer speeds depending on what port you're actually plugging that into. But let's go ahead and open the box and see what we get inside. So we get a little bag here of all of the stays and pieces to actually put the drives in. And they give you a little screwdriver, probably to mount the drive down. Okay, so here's the body. I believe it's an aluminum body or aluminum. And to open, you press here and push up. And then we have a uh, plastic, looks like it's injected molded, uh, housing which is pretty flexible. Uh, it's a good thing that you have uh, this to protect everything. I think if you didn't I might be a little worried. What you would do is you would choose the size of drive that you're putting in there, put the screw 
through there. So it looks like they give you two options. One is uh, kind of a more permanent option with this screw down post and then the other is this post that you can put in uh, on this side to put the key in uh, wherever you so choose. So let's get a few drives and see how this works. So here's a pretty obscure uh, 2230 drive that I bought for a project and we can take our black post, put it in the keyhole, push that down and that's pretty temporary. The nice part is that this should brush up against the case. Yep. Okay, so that's good to know. You can put this in backwards, and if you're not careful, you could get the drive stuck. That would have been nice if this was only able to be put together one way. That scraping noise, definitely not a fan. Pretty secure though. And then we can plug this in. And if we go ahead and grab our laptop again, see a blue indicator light there. And it does detect the disk. Uh, it's not formatted, so it's not showing up in uh, Windows, but it is showing up in disk management. So that definitely works uh, for the 2230. Now let's try a full-size drive. All right, so here's a full-size 2280. Yeah, and that's, this is the thing I don't like about the plug is that it's not actually holding that drive securely. Not a huge fan of how cumbersome this is. And I'm not entirely sure if you can call this fully uh, toolless either. Okay, so we've got the drive in there. We'll line up the pieces. Put that together. Yep, and once again, it detects the drive no problem. Working as intended. Okay, so overall, my impressions of this are, again, it's okay. There's a few things that I kind of was hoping for a bit more. So the first is this toolless entry thing. Um, eh, toolless entry, yes. Toolless assembly, mm, I'm not as convinced. So the plastic peg here, as you saw earlier, doesn't really do a great job of holding the drive down. Uh, because you have to put the screw in through this hole and there's not really a good way for you to like pinch and tighten this because this is actually a smooth piece of what appears to be brass. You can't actually grip it to tighten that. So there is a little bit of play in the drive, which you can hear there. The fact that you can assemble this incorrectly, not a huge fan of. There appears to be uh, some plastic there that's being shaved as this is going in and out. That scraping sound um, kind of bothers me a bit. It's a that's a that's a nitpick though, truly a nitpick. Is this functional? Yes. Does it uh, fit every drive? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Transfer speeds fine. The design I think needs a little bit more uh, time in the kitchen uh, to build something that's just a little bit more uh, user friendly. The cable is okay. Like this whole piece is kind of you know user respecting in the sense that it will work with anything that you have but overall i think there is also still a little bit of room uh, for improvement as well if you're interested in learning more about either this cable or this enclosure i'll leave some links down in the description for you thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time